Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will learn about retrofit. It might sound like a tough topic, but trust me, it is very simple. I'll be releasing this video in Hindi as well on Android Knowledge 2.0 channel, so make sure to subscribe my second channel as well. Link in the description box. Now let's understand what is retrofit. This is our bookish definition. Let me tell you what exactly retrofit is. Retrofit is a library which is used for making network requests and handling API communication in applications. Basically, it communicates between web server and application. Web server as in API. Now, what is API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. It provides a set of rules and protocols that allow different applications to communicate with each other, enabling developer to access and utilize functionality from external services within their own applications. In very simple language, consider I'm creating an app like Ola Uber where I need map functionality. So either I have two options to create my own map API or simply use Google Maps API in my application. Google Maps API is an external service provided by Google, which we can use in our application. API can be free or paid. We have several API like News API, Weather API, ChatGPT API, Spotify API and many more. They all works in real time means all the information provided by API are live. I consider I'm creating a news application where I'll use news API. So because of that, I'll get all the latest news in my app. Getting my point? Now there is something called as REST API. Let's understand it. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's a part of API that basically has a set of HTTP based protocols and principles that defines how system can communicate over the internet. They use HTTP methods or annotations like get, post, put, delete, and many more. Out of which, we will mostly use get, post, and query method. Get method is used to retrieve the data. Post method is used to send data to the server. Query method is used when we have to specify a particular parameter. We will use all of this when we will create project. Okay? I know theory might sound very boring to you, but these are few important terms that you need to know before creating an example project. Next is JSON. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is basically a format in which the data is preserved. Data is in maybe all the latest news or weather updates. Got it? But code cannot understand JSON format. Hence, we are supposed to convert it or in technical language, we say parse the data or serialize or deserialize it. There are many ways to convert JSON format to data out of which we will be using JSON library. I repeat JSON, not JSON. We will add JSON dependency in Android Studio that will help us to convert it. Got it? That converted data will be our Fojo class. That is plain old Java object. Or simply you can say a data class. Now let's have a look at API. As I'm creating an example project only, hence I'll be using a fake API. We will use real API as well in the end of this series. But for now, this is a popular website jsonplaceholder.typingcode.com that students and developers use to learn API. Let's go to this website first. Here it is. This is not API. This is a website that is providing us an API. Then where is API? These are all the APIs that website is providing us. Post, comments, album, to do. Let's have a look at them. Now, out of all of them, I'll be going for Albums API. Album as in song albums. Let's have a detailed look at it. Here, two things you need to know. First is the URL and second is JSON syntax. This is our URL. Till here, it's a base URL. And this one is our endpoint. That is basically our API itself. See, JSON placeholder is our main or base URL that provide us an API and this albums is an endpoint that is an API itself. Got it? This is important because in code we have to mention base URL and endpoint to access the service. Also, we can further customize URL as well by categorizing it more. But for now, just remember this pattern. Then this is what JSON formats look alike. I know it looks confusing, but you will be able to understand it once you are aware with the JSON syntax. So let's have a look at it. Also, you will be wondering what is this language? So it's let it, it won't bother us, okay? So now see, this is what the syntax looks like. We have two square brackets in the start and in the end. Those square brackets is array, okay? And inside array, we currently have two objects in it. 
object is determined by the curly braces. So this is one object and this is another object. Both of them are separated using a comma. Then in each object, we have a key and a value separated by a colon. Both of them are in double quotes. This is key and this is value. For example, this is an array inside it, two objects and then inside each object, we have key and values. This ID is a key and one is an int value. Then this name is a key and Android is a string value. Then in second object, ID is the key and two is an int value. And name is a key and knowledge is a string value. Got it. There can be multiple key and values in an object and multiple objects in an array. Got it. Now let's have a look at JSON format. See, this square bracket is an array that starts here. And ends here. In between, they have multiple objects. To be precise, they have 100 objects separated by comma. And in each object, we have keys and values. So in first object, we have key as user ID and value as 1. Then another key as ID and value as 1. Then another key as title and value as some string. Next, we have another object with same keys but different values. And so on. So basically, we are going to send a request through Retrofit to this API or server. And as a response, it will send us this JSON response, which will convert it in data using JSON library and display it on the text view. Simple, right? Let's quickly have a look at all the steps. So first, we will add dependency, then permissions, then we will create a data class, an interface, and Retrofit instance. Then from all the above steps, we have sent the request, and now we will receive it and display it in the text view. Now let's go to Android Studio and create it. Choose MDBeams activity, name it as Learn Retrofit, and finish. First, as I said, we will add dependency. So go to Gradle module. These are the three dependency. I'll mention them in the description box. This is for Retrofit. This is for JSON library for conversion and this one is for live data. We will use live data to receive the request. I have already explained live data in detail in one of my previous video. You can click on the i button to watch. Then add view binding as well. Also, I do face error with Compile SDK, so I'll change it to 34. And now click on Sync Now. And done. Then next, as all of this process is happening on internet, so obviously we will require internet and network permissions. So go to Android Manifest. First, I'll add internet permission. Then next, I'll add access network state permission. And then next, I'll add access Wi-Fi state permission. And that's it. Now we need to create a data class. So right click on it. New class. Name it as album item. And choose data class. Here we are supposed to add keys with their data type. That were present in objects in JSON. I'll keep it side by side. See. Keys are user ID, ID and title, right? So I'll write here as well, ID as int. Then user ID as int. And then title as string, simple. Then I'll add a serialized name to each one of them. Now what is serialized name? The serialized name is an annotation in JSON which is used to map a JSON key to a data field during serialization or deserialization. 
Basically, it allows you to specify a custom name for the key if it differs from the data field name to ensure a proper conversion between JSON and data. Safe play. Then we have keys. Values, we will receive it from server. But if you'll have a look at it, you will see all these objects are in an array. So we are supposed to create that array too, right? So come back to Android Studio, right click on it, create a new Kotlin class, name it as albums. As I said, we have to create an array list and inside it the object. So I'll extend it as array list and inside it our data class that is album item itself, right? And that's it. Now our next step is to create an interface. So right click on it, create a new class, name it as album service and choose interface. Here we are supposed to define endpoint using HTTPS method that is get method. So I'll write here as get annotation and inside it write the endpoint. Remember I told you about the base URL and endpoint? This is our endpoint. So I'll write here as slash albums. Basically get method retrieves the data, right? So to retrieve it, I'll create a get albums function. And as we are retrieving it, we will use response class. It's a part of retrofit. And inside it, album class, it retrieves a list of albums. Simple, right? Now next step is to set up retrofit instance. It is very easy, it's all mostly syntax only. So right click on it, create a new class, name it as retrofit instance. Here we are supposed to define the base URL and initiate retrofit. So to do that, first I'll create a companion object. Companion object consists of singleton object, basically like a static keywords. Then inside it, create a variable named as main URL and insert here the base URL that is the website that is providing the API. I'll copy paste it. And done. Then below it, we'll create a get retrofit instant function that will return a retrofit. So first, let me quickly write it. And done. See, it will return retrofit with its base URL as the URL we have mentioned above. And then JSON converter that will convert the JSON into data. And finally build it. Once everything is set up, we will receive the request through live data and display it in the text view. So first, we need to give a text view an ID. And let's go to activity main. Here, add ID as title text view because we will receive entire data, but we will display only the title for now. I'll remove it and done. Then go to main activity. Here, as I said, we will receive the request through live data. So let's create it. First, let's set a binding. And done. Then next we need to initialize the service. So let me quickly write it first. And done. 
This line creates an instance of an interface that is album service using retrofit. Basically, it enables you to make HTTP request to the slash albums that is our endpoint defined in the interface. Then next, with the help of live data, we will take the response. So let me quickly write it. And done. Now see, this code defines a live data that is response live data that emits the response from the retrofit service dot get albums. Emit and then sends the response. It is typically used for observing and handling the responses. Then next, we need to observe that data. So first, let me quickly write it. And then, see, this code observes the response live data and upon receiving a response, it trades through the list of albums in the response body and store it in the album list variable. Then, if the album list is not null means it is present, then use while loop to iterate through each album and store it in album item variable. And then for each album, it extracts the title and store it in album title variable. And then finally, appends it to the title text view. Append as in to add. We usually use append instead of dot text in web services. Okay. And that's it. Our code is ready. Let's run the app. Perfect. All the album titles are displayed on the screen. See, compare it side by side. I know it looks messy, but it's an example project just to make you understand how Retrofit works. Further, in upcoming videos, we will create a professional app using Retrofit. But for now, just remember the steps to implement Retrofit. Okay? Also, for more updates, you can follow us on Instagram or join our Telegram group. Link in the description box. So yeah, that is it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.